what should one do as a magic player to get the foundation or the fundamentals? Mm -hmm. Is it playing certain decks in certain eras? Is it reading literature from certain eras? Is it attacking and blocking, as you said? Mm -hmm. What is it? There's a lot. Personally, like this being my like job, my full time job is like I coach. I coach about like, you know, 35 to 40 hours a week. That's kind of what I do. But I think that like where I would say to begin with is like attacking and blocking is a huge part of magic. And it is something that matters a lot because there's so much of the game is about creatures and the board. So that's like one part of it. And I think like really engaging with combat and figuring out those sort of things. So that's like the karate kid wax on, wax off. Wax on, right hand. Wax off, left hand. Like you should probably just even like go through combat math and mm -hmm. and get familiar with a lot of repetition on like certain situations, like how to attack into or how to defend and that kind yeah. of thing. Yeah, and like one thing I tell people early on is like try to think about can I make an attack here that sets up an attack on the next turn. Let's say I have a four four and some two twos, and you have a couple two twos. Well, the board's kind of locked up, and I can offer my four four. And maybe, like, you know, if I hit you, it might not matter this turn, but it might be setting up lethal later. Or I get my nice clean two for one, and then I can slam in with more of my two twos, right? Where I can make a big alpha attack, and I'm going to push more damage, you know? Maybe the example gets a little more complicated, where I have a three three, a couple of them, some two twos, right? So what happens, I think, a lot of times, the end of the round, you're like, what is going on? And you walk over, and there's like this clogged board state where both players have a million things, right? A lot of times what happened is someone missed their opportunity to start attacking and getting in with like that old growth troll, that cavalier of thorns, and they missed the opportunity. And so I, I tell a lot of people like, hey, like, try to pay attention on where you can start making attacks. And something I learned that was really helpful to me was like, you're probably attacking a turn too late. If it looks like I can't attack, I ask myself the question of, Am I missing an attack? Because sometimes that yeah. extra two damage, it decides the match, essentially. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I mean, if, like, if I get in for, like, you know, let's say two damage a couple times because you don't want to block or whatever because you think I have an Aganjo or an Wandering Emperor that gives first strike or something, and, you know, I don't. I just, I'm bluffing you. Or I'm, I want the trade, right? And, like, I hit you for, like, let's say four damage over two turns. Suddenly, you know, my dragon or this kill spell I draw uh, matters a lot. Or your kill spell matters a lot less, right? And instead of being able to beat down on me, you're like, well, I'm at like six now. I can't attack with as much as I want to because Mason got in that four damage earlier. So I think that's really important. The next thing that I constantly tell people is that like big picture thinking of magic is the thing that I think people don't practice enough. And magic players are historically awful at practicing. They just play games over and over again. And they're like, this is the way to improve. I'll just play a million games. And it's like... Mm -hmm. It doesn't really work that way. If you're not thinking about things, you don't have a purpose, or if you're not reflecting on them, it's not going to help you. You know, I think that like actually thinking about sort of how these matchups play out, what are the cards that matter? What are the strengths of my deck? What are the weaknesses? Why is this deck the strongest deck? Understanding those kind of things, that matters so much more than playing a bunch of games. Your first, you know, 50 games of your standard deck matter a lot. Your first 100 games of your modern deck matter a lot. Your 500th game of Tide probably isn't giving you the insight that like spending 30 minutes and just like reading over rhino's deck list and being like so this is how they are all building their decks i think they might sideboard like this against me how might i sideboard differently or like does this make sense for me to play my games in that way and do i want to have this card instead of that card because of this right and those sort of things and then going out and testing with friends and like actually testing you know and being like hey let's engineer scenarios where like you know, these Rhino players are all playing, you know, Night Pack Ambushers, a new card that's popping up in Cyborgs, right? And, like, let's assume you think this is for the Murktide matchup for whatever reason. It's like, hey, Steve, put Night Pack Ambusher in your opening hand, draw six other cards, and let's play, and let's see what it's like. Because I think that that card probably doesn't matter against me, but everyone seems to be doing it, and I kind of want to test it, right? Or maybe I think that card is the Stone Colds against me. And I think that, like, it's going to be too hard to have you know, answers for your rhinos and answers for this card, you know, blah, 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 blah. And play, reflect, and think, and very much take, like, the scientific method from high school, right? Form a hypothesis, test your hypothesis, reflect, and, you know, repeat the process. And be like, okay, I thought these things, here we are, this, you know? Jerry Thompson kind of calls this, like, the truth of the matchup in some ways. When he said that, it clicked to me because that was something I had been doing with other stuff but didn't know how to verbalize it. And when he said those words and kind of talked about it a little bit, I was like, oh, this is what the thing I've been doing is. Like, trying to figure out, like, what matters in, like, a few games and then exploit it. 
that's the truth of the matchup. That's what I should call this thing, you know? And sometimes I call it like macro game planning now in coaching. The big thing I would tell people is slow down, think through your turn, be precise, and like try and form game plans, you know? We talked about it earlier. Cyborg guides, I think, are legitimately a great tool. And it's not because the lights are on because of it. You know, I think they are a great tool for people who have a lot of things going on and just in general want to get insight from someone. I don't think I've ever seen anyone writes their own guide before or after buying someone's guide but before reading it and then compare notes like that was the thing where it'd be like okay i've bought you know let's say jesse robkins cyborg guide right and so I, I pull up her breach deck but before i read anything else i look at her breach deck you know i know the 10 matchups that are there i'm like okay this is what i think and why and i'm going to write this out or at least have it in my head you know it doesn't need to be actually written but i'm going to think about it and then i'm going to read what jesse said and I'm going to assume that the very smart person who I paid money for was right and be like, okay, why did I think this and she thought this? And I assume she is right and we'll work from that conclusion. Oh, she mentioned this in her article about, you know, Unholy Heat actually doesn't matter a lot. I thought it would. That makes a ton of sense. Urza Saga might outgrind them. It's going to be hard for them to leave in a lot of those cards. I've learned something. That's something where I tell people that people don't work on making game plans enough and they just play. Having an idea gets you so far. And I, for a long time, I've been a true believer that plan beats no plan every time. You and I play 100 games and you just play your cards and I have a plan in the matchup, I'm going to win a majority of them unless the matchup is truly lopsided in your favor. There are kind of mm -hmm. two extremes, right? On one hand, you have somebody like Misplaced Ginger, aka Derek, mm -hmm. who, by the way, he, he has a solid foundation for magic. So it's just because mm -hmm. I see him play a ton of matches doesn't mean that he doesn't already have fundamentals from, you know, oh, yeah. the previous years or decades that he's played Magic. But you do have people that play a lot. And mm -hmm. then you have someone like an Alexander Hain who says, you know, you'd be surprised how little I play Magic and how much I just think about mm -hmm. Magic. Is it just about getting the baseline or 10,000 hours of Magic first before you can make a decision to grind harder or to think harder? Mm -hmm. Is it all moot if you don't have the foundational experience, mm -hmm. I guess is the question. Hain, when was playing Magic, barely played, and Ginger plays all the time. Hain is better than Ginger. They would all agree to that, whatever. I've heard them have the conversation before. It is not, like, so disparate, right? But they just approach things very differently. So I think to answer your question, I wonder how much early on teaching these people to think about big picture planning and to come up with game plans helps them versus hurts them, right? Because in some ways, I am sort of giving a child a power drill, right? Where it's like, come up with a plan, you know, and they're like, rrr, rrr, and they like try to like, be like, I'm going to never play into days or whatever. And it's like, well, you're going to be off curve and lose the game. Sometimes you have to play into days, mm -hmm. you know, if I could have the ideal sort of magic player, I think they should be thinking about those things kind of like Hane does, but they should be grinding like Ginger does. So they get to the point where they feel like they've sort of hit the natural cap for whatever format they're competing in and the sort of games that are going on there. And then they should start to balance it more out. You know, mm -hmm. um, I definitely think like on the scale, I fall. I think almost to a fault on the like Alexander Hain part of the thing where I play significantly less magic than I probably should. I have always sort of taken the like thinking about things, focus testing, and then going into a tournament. Once you sort of get the foundational skills down and you do have those strong understandings of magic at a core, you can pick up and play these other decks and you can really focus on game plans and thinking about things beforehand mm -hmm. and then focus on tight technical play in the game. One of the things I typically tell people in coaching is that, like, no matter where you, what game you're playing, you know, if, if you want to, you can practice planning through your whole turn and tight technical play in every game. You know, you and I are Cuban. We can, you know, you can practice those things while still having yep. fun if you want to. Obviously, don't, don't ruin the vibes or whatever, but, you know, you could do it. Same thing you and I are playing in an RCQ. We could have that happen. I prepare more by thinking in the actual in-game decisions. I've sort of thought about those things, how the games play out, sort of what matters, and then I use those things to kind of inform where I stand, and then I make the choices in game. And so when I'm preparing for tournaments, typically it's to get like when I play games, it's often to see like something I can't imagine in my head or something I I don't really know the play pattern for, and I try to get an understanding, or it's me trying to get more sample size to like understand more scenarios to think of. And then when I play the tournament, I really try to think through what the decisions in like what all their plays have meant because I just don't have the time to grind like someone like Nathan would, I think, to like, or Ginger, to like really get that understanding of every little minute detail. So I need to sniff it out when I'm playing, but I have the faith and the confidence that I can do that pretty well. 
and I just need to prepare well beforehand on the other things so that I can focus solely on playing. And I can be like, yeah, I understood sort of what mattered in this matchup we went in. And it was my job just to orchestrate the game to play out the way I wanted it to. 